Hello again everyone, so I'm just making this quick clip just to let you all know what's going on. Um, I did put a video up, when did I put that video up about me doing, um, moaning about the internet? Was it about three or four days ago? Uh, I think so, yeah. About three or four days ago, explaining that I've had no internet for like 12 days and today it's finally back and I said I'd get a video up on the day and I'm just editing it now. Well, you can kind of, you can, yeah. Um, Flipping out what a faff it's been with Sky, right? First of all, we had no internet, so I rang up, told them about it, we'll get an engineer out. Um, five days later, I got a text saying the engineers tried to fix the problem from outside the home, at this like box or something, wasn't able to do so. So now you have to ring Sky and book an engineer to come to your house. Right, so I done that. Three days later, an engineer comes out. Uh, has it been 10 days? It, it's been over a week, right? It's been 10 days. It's been 10 days. Yeah. yeah, because we lived with no internet for a day or two because we thought it would just probably fix itself again. Anyway, um, engineer came out today and he was like, oh yeah, the problem is, is, is your cable lock, your DSL cable that goes from the router to the wall. Oh yeah, sand. We don't carry him with us. Oh. <laughs> so... so We've been out shopping today. It's, luckily enough, we had to go food shopping. So whilst we were out, we picked up a DSL cable. We ended up going to three different places to find one. Finally found it in good old trusty Wilco's. And brought it back home, plugged it all in. Everything's back to normal. Fine, we've got the internet now. So that's, yeah, it's good. We're back up and running. I did want to do something really cool. And I had a plan to do something really funny for this, this next video. Because I said I want to do something special for 500 subscribers. So, um... That was meant to be this video, but I just want to try and get... The, I have still got a plan for something I want to do. Alice knows what it is. Jackson may have heard me talking about it, and that's a little clue there. Um, but I just wanted to get a video out there just to show you that I have been thinking about you within the two weeks. I have been still recording. It's two weeks, ten days. I have still been recording, and this, that, and the other. But I just thought I'd just show you what I've been up to for the past week. And in the next video, I've got some really something really cool and interesting. It's hydro dipping. You're going to love it. I can't flipping wait. You're going to come along with good or bad. We're going to go on the journey together. But that video should be up within the next three days after this one. Because I've got loads of footage to get through. But yeah, I just wanted to say sorry for the long wait. Here's, here's what I've been up to for the past week or so. And the next video, I'm going to do something very... <laughs> what I think is funny. You might not find it as funny as me, but I'll find it funny. Yeah, but your version of funny is like an old man dad joke. How is it? No, it's not. It's not. It's funny. Don't listen to her. She's a naysayer. But, um, yeah, it's going to be cool. It's going to be funny. And what else was there? It's going to be cool. It's going to be funny. And, yeah, that was it. Just, just another massive thank you for over 500 subscribers. Thanks for sticking with me. I remember when I got 50 subscribers, I thought 50 people want to watch my videos. <laughs> so, to have 500 people want to watch my videos, flipping wicked. Nice one, guys. Catch you in a bit. Hello everyone, so I've come to you today in the hopes that my microphone isn't crackling and in the hopes that you can actually hear me because I've had to stuff the uh, microphone up inside the liner of the, uh, the headliner of the helmet <laughs> because I've, I think I've realised that I'm being too loud on the microphone when I talk and it's causing the crackle so I'm trying something new right now and I already wish I'd have put my leather trousers on I've got my spats on again and my motorbike jeans but the wind is still creeping through through the fabric <laughs> yeah my top half's lovely and warm but lower down not so but I mean, the weather said it's going to be dry all day, but I'm not so sure I trust these clouds I'm just, just seeing now. If anything, it looks... <laughs> That's a damn rain cloud, I am telling you now. Oh, no! Well, I've, um, I've planned to see a friend of mine, Darren, and go for a little ride out day before lockdown whilst we can. But I tell you now, this weather, I don't think it's going to let us do it. Not, not by the look of those clouds. But we shall see. 
we will see it might pass it might only be a little a little spritz of rain i'm not sure yet but yeah so that's that's the plan also in today's video i am planning to paint now i didn't want to do this i wanted to get them powder coated my rear sets and my rear pillion foot pegs i wanted them powder coated because that is the strongest best way to get them done without without i'm looking a bit naff after a while and chipping away but that just isn't going to happen now because of lockdown so i'm going to paint them i'm going to use some hammerite gloss black because it is tough paint i've used it on various things in the past not had a problem but those things i painted in the past i wasn't i didn't have my feet on and <laughs> you know rubbing against them so i'm just gonna go for it for 10 quid if it if it lasts a month it lasts a month you know i'll be happy with that and then after this lockdown i'll get them powder coated anyway so that's the plan in today's video i've also found that this little bracket on the end of my exhaust that i want to paint black too but i'll have to use the heat proof paint for that so yeah today's video anyway so let's go and see my friend daz i'll see you when i'm there guys see you later You know when you know you're completely legal, you've got nothing to hide, you're fully insured, tax, MOT, license, blah blah blah, but there's a police car behind you. Why is it you always crap your pants? <laughs> you know what I mean? You must know what I mean. Looking for a Halfords to buy some paint. Yes, they're still behind me. Probably running their checks. Am I good? Am I good, Mr. Policeman? <laughs> oh, Darren. Oh, look at you drive riding sensibly, eh? I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's something I want to talk about. In my last video, I mentioned about on your mod 2 taking it very slow and thinking. Now, um, Steve commented, the guy who, who done pretty much 95% of my lessons, commented saying, no, don't be slow all the time, yeah, do the limits and stuff, but don't go bumbling along and, you know, causing a hold-up. I think he wrote, like, if you do 20 and a 40, um, you, you are going to either fail or be marked down for that. And I didn't, <laughs> I didn't realise, I watched the video back, how, how much it came across that I meant, like, physically ride your bike slow. I kind of, <laughs> it did come across that way, so I do have to apologise. What I was getting at is, slow your brain down. Don't panic too much about thinking about a million things at once. You do have things to think about on your mods. Of course you do. You've got a lot to think about, but what I, what I was trying to get through is just slow it down in your head. Just slow down, breathe, take each thing as it comes. So, hi Ricky, I want you to take the next right. I don't want you to think... Alright, so like, well, what about this thing? What about that thing? Just slow you just slow your head down, just take a breath and go right. Literally. <laughs> Literally go right. <laughs> well no, go right. I need to turn right. Break it down. This, 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 this. 
follow your steps to do, to do in that. I just don't want people panicking, you know, because I imagine there is a lot of competent riders out there who fail the mod to because because they've panicked and they're absolutely brilliant riders, you know. So just just slow your slow your mind down. Don't panic too much. At the end of the day, it's not a, a one test and that's it, is it? Like I've always said, if you fail it, you just do it again. So don't panic, just stay cool, get it done. Hammer right, there we go. Smooth black, but isn't that gloss? It doesn't say if it's gloss. I don't think anything else is going to be strong, quite strong enough. It's got to be that one. Oh well, be a surprise. Satin. Smooth. It would seem that. Going for this one. And I know this is quite coarse, but I want it to be. I want it to really scruff up those, that, that metal. So it's got a really good adhesion. Hi mate, just lose. Oh, then. Lovely, thank you buddy, cheers. So paint and scuffing up material is acquired. I've just had to break my glove to get it on and I'll explain what, um, well, in fact, I'll try and explain now. Inside these gloves, the winter gloves, they have this like, um, thermal, there's a thermal glove inside the leather, plastic, latexy, whatever material they're made out of. Uh, glove itself and it had become so twisted that there was just no absolute way of getting my hand back in that glove so I've had to tear all that out now I feel like I've got my hand inside a bin liner look like I was only 10 quid and they, they didn't have to last me long but I expected them to last quicker than that to be fair and they're not they're not the most comfortable but to avoid these gloves just avoid the Amazon about 10 between 10 and 12 pounds just avoid these gloves I am gonna have to spend some money on some good ones now because I've had it with cheapo ones well, I'm going to get myself back home get a shower chill out and then I'll probably get on with some painting of the uh, the foot pegs and that tomorrow but for you guys, it would be just oh. good day. All right. So you all know I want everything on this bike. Well, you, I want to get as much as I can on this bike black. And I'm, is, I pretty much had a good starting point already to begin with because a lot of the bike was made black. But as you can see, the rear sets, the rear foot pegs, and this rear part of the subframe is not black. Nor on my levers. But at the moment I can't afford the levers I want for it but I can however afford to sort this out 
Uh, today, however, it will just, well, for you, it'll, be in, it'll all be in this one video, but for me, I'll just be doing the rear pegs today because I've planned to take my bike for a ride today. It's not, not the best weather, but it's not wet either. I'd say it's slightly damp and I'm trying to get as many miles in on my bike before it, it's just impossible um, due to winter. So any chance I get, I'm riding it. So I can ride it without the rear foot pegs whilst they're drying. So that's, that's this part of the video's plan anyway, is to remove the foot pegs, sand them down, get them painted. I have decided that for the rear subframe, because I didn't want to really paint it because it's, it's, it's such an integral part of the bike. Now I know I painted these front fairings, but that's, that's a fairing, okay? That can be easily replaced. I didn't really want to paint this part of the bike because once that's done, there's pretty much no going back unless I paint it silver again. So I'm, I'm still tempted to, to vinyl wrap that, get some black, gloss black vinyl wrap and just get that in there. That way, should I ever consider selling the bike in the future, I can just peel that off and then the bike's skeleton, if you will, the main frame of the bike is original. And then it's just down to fear in lovers to, yeah, yeah, to change back to original if they want to. So yeah, that's today's plan. So tools needed, these, are th these things and a cup of tea. All right, let's get on it. I'm not actually sure how to remove these. I'm guessing, it, well it looks to me like... So there's like a round thing in there. I don't know if you can see that. Kind of goes into that hole, then when you do that it kind of snaps into that hole. I've noticed there's like a, a bendy pin thing there. So I'm guessing straight in that out, knock that through, and that will come off. So yeah, what actually, what I wanted to tell you was, I know painting these isn't ideal. Um, I did want to get them powder coated, and I had plans to get them powder coated, but then we're in a second lockdown now, for four weeks, so I won't be able to get them done, and that was always the plan. So, I'm painting them, and they've only got to last me a month, because at the end of this month, well, at the end of this lockdown, they were going in for powder coating, but for now, I wanted them black. I really flipping wanted these painted, well, in black in colour. And I'm not going to get that now for another month. So I bought a 10 quid can of paint and some of these steel wool rolls. Because I really want this surface scoffed up. Really good. And I don't even know if that's doing anything. It's got to be doing something, right? Yeah, it is. I can see the marks. So yeah, that's that's the plan. So I need to uh, remove that. So I've just been thinking about how to hang these and I've come up with a brilliant solution all by myself. Right. Alice, Alice just happened to be here when I come up with the discovery. So I suggested that we put, no Alice come up with this. So I'm going to put a nut through that and then tie a string to this. That way I can get full coverage. Clever aren't I? Uh, I mean Alice. That's the plan. So I'll see you when I've got this all 
hung up to dry. Well, hung up to dry. When I've got it all hung up, and then I'll be. Um, I know where I was going with dry because I've got to degrease it. You know, pre-paint prep stuff. So I'll catch you when that's all hung up somewhere. Right. Some of you may not know this, but I was a tattooist for the longest time. So I know art when I see it. Studied it, went to college for a bit. Didn't go to college for too long because I just wanted to get straight into work. But I studied art, went to a few art shows, art museums, galleries and all that. I know art when I see it. But you create, you, art should make you feel something, right? It should, should be aesthetic. It should make you feel whatever, sad, blue, up, down. This piece of art makes me feel like a genius. Have you ever seen such beautiful craftsmanship? I mean, just look at this genius. Get round the back. I just, I surprise myself sometimes, I really do. Absolute genius. I'm going to get my paint now, which actually is, I've left stewing on the radiator to warm up. Oh, that can's lovely and warm. Warm paint always sprays a bit nicer, so just bear that in mind. And this is the one I went for. Direct to rust metal paint. Just no primer necessary. Just going to uh, use this. I'm going to sit you up somewhere. Somewhere I'm not going to get my camera ruined. And um, get to painting. But I'm going to hold the camera. And go from... See that? See how it's just... Hold on, move it from the overspray. Oh, I've just got that weird speckly thing. That's what I want for my first coat. I don't want anything more than that. That will do. You see that? That is bang on for your first coat. Oh, went way too heavy there. Don't, don't, that shouldn't be your first coat. But luckily it's on the back and I've learned from that. It just came out really fast there for some reason. Watch this. Genius. That, my friends, is the first coat. Give that 15 minutes. Come back and apply the second one. 15 minutes later, and here I am with the can. The man with the can and the plan. Genius, kind of. So I'm going to go a bit heavier then. The last one. But again, I'm not looking for full coverage just yet. But I certainly want them looking. Not they're going black at this point. It's impressive though, it really doesn't need a primer. I'm a bit skeptical at that when I read it. I'm going to put the camera down because I, I keep seeing the overspray come back and I really can't afford to destroy this GoPro. So what you've just seen me do there, I'm going to do to all of them and I'll give you, I'll show you up close after I've done, done that. Coat number two. I don't know if the light's any good. I'm sorry if it's not. But you can see it's not full coverage. It's kind of like a... It's almost like a clear coat mixed with a tint of black, actually. You just keep building up the layers. So far, I'm impressed with that paint. These are the pegs. They look like they're done from, from here, don't they? But when you get close, you can see that they're, they're not. But I don't think this camera likes to focus up close. No. Does that help? See, a lot of YouTubers do this kind of stuff to get a focus, but no, no. 
but yeah, they're not done. One more coat, so another 15 minutes. We'll lay down the third, third and final coat, and then I'm just gonna leave them overnight to dry. Back, be back when I've done the last coat so you can see what it looks like. Hello, you bunch of beautiful people. Here we go, all done. Super, super happy with how they've turned out. Like, pff, super, super happy how they turned out. I look nice. Full coverage. Look at these pegs as well, look at these. I know these are gonna be the first thing to wear off. It's paint at the end of the day. I, as I've said, I wanted them powder coated. What? Took three coats, light, medium, and then a heavy one. But I am super, super happy with how they've turned out. I really am. This, this paint's really, really nice. I'm tempted to use the paint to actually paint this. I really am tempted for that. It's got a really nice finish, and I know Hammerite's really tough paint. And I don't need to put any primer down for it. I can just scotch, scotch that uh, rear subframe piece up and just apply this straight to it. I really, really am happy with that quality. So I'm gonna leave them to dry. But I'll just, <laughs> what am I gonna do in the meantime? Eee! That's what I'm going to do. Come on now. You know me, if it ain't raining, I'm riding. I'm really sorry for the microphone. I just don't know what to do. Can someone out there <laughs> who, may, who possibly knows anything about these cameras and microphone setups please give me some advice I've, I've tried four different microphones now i've tried orientating the microphone in different places of my helmet i just can't stop it crackling um yeah i'm at wit's end with it if i'm honest so any help and advice would be greatly appreciated i might i don't know whether to go back and uh, get some leather trousers on they don't match though but what I've got on now just isn't warm. Ooh, yeah. Oh, it's fresh. I tell you, it's fresh. You certainly need them layers during winter. I'm turning. I've got to go and get some leather trousers on. These, these jeans just, they are biker's jeans, but they're just not warm. And I'll explain why when I remove them. So this is what I was on about, look. You see on the, on the crotch area of these jeans, they've got this vented thing. It's vented part, which is stretchy, but even with the uh, base layers on, still, <laughs> right there as well, like right where you do not want the cold. So I'm gonna just chuck my levers on. Take two, and already my man, my manly area is warmer. So well worth turning back for. <sighs> Three bars of fuel. Now normally I go to uh, Beast and Weir, which is the stretch of water I was talking to you guys in in the last video but I'm going to take it to the River Trent today because it's quite peaceful there just like it is where I normally go but I fancy a little ride out today plus I need to go to the shop so I'm just going to take a long route to the shop so what I'll do is I'll check in with you guys when I'm when I'm nearly there Catch you to talk about. Yeah, that was it. That's what I wanted to talk about. Uh, in my last video, somebody commented saying, um, "Hey, Rick, you ever thought about doing a, you know, talking about how it feels to jump from a one two five to a six hundred? And I thought, oh yeah, yeah, that that would make a good chat, give us something to talk about. And then uh, I'm jumping on my bike now, and I'm thinking, well, other than power, what is there to really talk about? Um, what I will say is knowing you've got a fast bike between your legs is like this look for example I know I can out accelerate that car so I'm going to on my 125 I would have just chilled there 
I would have just I'd have just chilled back, took it easy. Yeah, that car's gonna pass me, um, and <laughs> think nothing more of it. But when you know you've got the power, you do use it. Not all of it, obviously. I, I only really use 15% to 20% of this bike's power, 90% of the time. Well, 95% of the time. And what I have noticed is my 125 life on that was was more chilled out. I, I, I appreciated journeys more because I knew I had not really much choice. It wasn't all about I'm on a motorbike, let's go fast. It was more I'm on a motorbike, let's just go for a cruise. And when I when I got on this, it's like I'm always looking for a place to, to feel the power. Not full whack, but for example like here i know it's a straight piece of road i want to just just a little bit not much just a little bit just because it's an addictive feeling you know my 125 i never got around the corner i thought right let's just flipping cane it no i just got around the corner and i was just tootling away <laughs> way more relaxed apart from when i got on dual carriageways that's that's when uh, it became a little bit of a stress on, on a 125 but um yeah so other than other than the power oh is he lost <laughs> so obviously the power the power is obvious one right and then there's the fact that you know you can outpace pretty much most things you come across not that i not that i do that but i think about it and i never used to think about that i never used to think about Oh, I'm just going to just rip, rip in front of this car because I can or rip in front of that I never had to think about that before I was happy just chilling and that is the biggest difference I mean everyone wants to go from a 125 right to something faster because well unless you're happy on a 125 you might just need it for commuting and, and absolutely bang on but I wanted to get my full license I just wanted to become a biker at the end of the day what I will say though is when I pull this throttle back, I smile, and I think, bloody hell. But I had way more fun on my 125. At this point, I mean, I'm still, I mean, when it comes to riding, I'm not a biker. I've just passed my bike test. I'm, I'm, I'm so new to everything, like, I'm not a biker. I'm just a guy who's passed his test and got a bike. I think it takes a good few years to call yourself a proper biker or oh, a few thousand miles that's for sure but well, well, yeah going on that because I haven't got the skill yet to use this bike to its full potential I don't whereas on a 125 it's a learner bike for a reason isn't it all right so you, you have to kind of use that bike to its full potential to get up to speed to to keep up with traffic and when you're approaching a corner, a tight corner, you know you've got cars behind you, you can't... You, you, you know, when you get round that corner, it's going to take you a while to build that speed back up and you don't want to hold back traffic, so you, you have to learn to take a corner at a bit of speed just to keep your speed up there at some point. Yeah, so as I was saying, I don't feel like this bike handles any differently to my LXR, but then I'm riding it and, you know, as I would my LXR, I'm not experienced enough to take a corner at such a speed and I don't really want to take corners at speed just because I can. I just like to do what I like to do on a bike and that is just go for a cruise around but just difference is this one's just got way more way more instant power so I wouldn't really say there's a things to watch out for going from a 125 to a 600 and I, I'm, in my head I mean I don't want to upset anybody but in my head I think any videos or anyone telling you oh yeah you know other than power oh yeah you know is it, there's a lot to think about going from, from a 125 to a 600 i think are just talking nonsense because it's down to the rider not the bike it's how you ride the, i can ride this bike at exactly the same speed as i did my lxr i could change out of first gear at 20 miles an hour like my lxr did i could do 70 miles an hour top speed like my lxr did it's down to the rider there's nothing to watch out for other than the power you know just take it easy on the throttle and you, you, you're laughing and just don't be an idiot that's it that's all i can say <laughs> like, i don't think any videos that say oh how to ride a 600 or how to do how to ride a, a faster bike than a learner bike 
I'm just trying to make videos just for the sake of making videos. I don't think there's anything creditable in that, personally. I think it just comes down to you and yourself. Just don't be a fool and just rip that throttle back. Oh, but no, this road's good. But like I say, that's my opinion. There's, there's people that would argue that, there's people that would want to add points to that. Like, no, Rick, there's this to think about, there's that to think about, and then fair, fair enough on that. But from my experience, and I'm literally first hand done that, I've literally just gone from a 125 to a 600. And I'm telling you from my point of view, there's nothing other than power that feels any different. Looks like I'm turning around. Turning the road. It's a lot harder on a sports style bike. Oh dear, well that's a shame. It's a really nice part of the water over there. That you can park up and just see the River Trent. I was really hoping we could go there. Just to add as well, just bear this in mind. If you if you drive a car and let's say you've got a let's say you've got a one litre, it's your first car, right? No, chances are, out of push, you could still probably get 90 miles an hour out of that one litre on the motorway, right? It just takes time, because you won't get there as quick as a bigger engine car. But say you've had that car for a while, and then you think, I'm going to go buy something a bit nippier, like, I don't know, a Fiesta ST, right? Young driver, wants a faster car, but a cool car, in whatever way you look at it, or a Golf GTI, something like that. That person doesn't go onto YouTube and write, how to drive a Golf GTI after being used to a Nissan Micro? No, they don't do that. You just buy it and drive it. You just, you just be careful because you understand that it's got more power. You know, it's not like a 600s. The, the accelerator is on the left and the clutch is on the right. No, it's not a whole new thing. It's just faster, and you've just got to bear that in mind. So don't. I don't think there's any kind of special <laughs> special tips and tricks going from a learner to a fast bike, none. Just take it easy, honestly. Just just relax. Just appreciate what power it's got and respect it from there. Painted! And I gave all these a polish as well, look, on my polishing machine. Got some auto sol on them, give them a scrub a dub dub. Now I just remember how these things go back together. So bear with I. In fact, let me move my camera to the side a bit so I can, I can actually see what you're seeing. So yeah, I'm going to rebuild these now. I'm going to time lapse it because it's going to take me a while and you're going to be bored. So let me get on with putting these back together and then we'll get on with putting them on the bike. Happy, happy, happy times. Let's go chuck them on the bike. The next day, and I just thought I'd bring you out to have a look at the rear sets. Very nice. They look good in black, and it's something I'm definitely going to get done properly after lockdown. Without hesitation, because I think that really looks good. I think I need to take that big white sticker off. And obviously, I definitely need to get that subframe part painted. But other than that, I think the bike looks brilliant going all black I know what you're thinking or what some of you are thinking Rick that's not going to last two minutes I know <laughs> it probably isn't but um, at least I get to see what it looks like before spending the money on powder coat and it was only a tenner and I enjoyed doing it if I'm honest I enjoyed doing little bits and bobs like that but I just thought I'd give you guys a, a quick look I've got to ride out today um, someone I know passed away and it was well into his bikes and his family have asked if we can do an escort from a pub to uh, the cemetery uh, and obviously I'm going to go there because I knew the guy and yeah I just just want to show my respects so I'm gonna go and do that it's you know it's all gonna be adhering to the social distancing rules we're all on bikes and helmets and protective gear anyway and we're not we're not getting out or anything like they're getting off the bikes we're just we're just gonna we're just gonna escort him 
to to where he's going to be. So yeah, I'll let you know. I'll, well, I'll, 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 I'll do another video when I get back to see if these have faded or anything or chipped off, which I'm expecting they would have, but <laughs> hoping they won't. All right, guys, I'll see you in a bit. Everybody, so we've come at you on a different day. Um, went to my friend's funeral yesterday and it was as you can expect but he got a wonderful wonderful turnout of bikers all turned up and escorted him to where he needs to be now and it was it was really nice it was really touching and wonderful bloke he was just wanted to say i know you won't know him and i won't go into it because it's not it's not really my business to share but yeah yeah wonderful bloke he was so um today i'm giving it a rinse off Dun dun dun! So these are coming off already. I've only been to been on one trip and jet washed it, and I keyed them to an inch of their life, and they're just not adhering. So I'm going to drop them into some thinners, strip all the paint off, polish them up on my machine, order some black rear sets. Done. I'm not going to get them powder coated because I've seen to get these powder coated, it's about hundred quid, and I've seen some really nice aftermarket rear sets in black that are adjustable for hundred quid. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to put these back to original and order the order the black adjustable ones so yeah but i've had some great news thanks to my wonderful girlfriend hey. and my unending supply of charm <laughs> she's a it's not that funny i've got some charm you know uh, she's letting me put my bike in the kitchen to tinker with for a bit i've got loads of room in there it's nice and warm and yeah so before anything i need to give it a clean off so i've just rinsed it sponged it rinsed it again now i'm going to dry it and then i'm going to try and get it through the front door and then from the front door through the kitchen door and then position it in the kitchen so i'll see you when we're on that <laughs> 